All right. So once you've opened up your image in Photoshop, it should look something like this. Okay. Now, it is the key to your water drop photos is cropping. Okay. And you got to figure out where to crop it because this picture is not okay. All right. It's got stuff in it that shouldn't be in it. Okay. Um, I, when I first did this photo, I thought about cropping it actually square and then just having the water drop in the center, but I really didn't like that because it didn't kind of tell me where the water drop was coming from. So what I ended up doing is, um, taking some different, um, some different screenshots and cropping kind of the area that I really liked. Now I actually really like, um, this area up here just as much as I like the water drop down below. Okay, but I don't like it in the center. I like it more, you know, over in the corner. Following my rule of thirds quite a bit. Now, I also really don't like the water drop or the clear cup either. So I kind of had to figure out what I wanted to keep in there and what I didn't. So I like that. So I'm going to hit enter. And I have this image. Now I'm going to run Coffee Shop Vivid on it. And what Coffee Shop Vivid will do is a lot of different things. I'm going to move this over so I can see my whole screen. Because once I hit play, it won't let me do that. And it's going to give you this dialog box. And I'm just going to hit enter. I'm going to hit enter again, um, and I'm going to press OK. Now what I do is, these aren't going to have color casts. That's what um, the original one talked about. You can use levels two ways. Two ways as in, these. this is your whites, this is your mediums, and this is your darks. You can also use eyedroppers to remove color casts. So if I use the white eyedropper and find the widest spot on my image and click it, it's going to adjust it. Um, if I don't like that, I can always Command Z and it will take me back to the original. So I'll go in here. All right, I can also use the black water drop and find the area that is black. There really isn't any black areas in this, but I could go like that and create a black area if I wanted to. Now that's pretty drastic, so I'm going to undo that. Um, then what I do is I pull these in. Now this image doesn't have a low white mountain. If this was um, all white, you want to pull your outside things in until it gets to the first mountain is what it's called. And yes, that is a Photoshop term. And then I'm going to adjust my grays and then you adjust your blacks. So I always start with whites and then the gray is attached to your white and your black. So you want to adjust that. What it's going to do is going to bring out those mid-tones and that bokeh in the background. So do what you need to do for that until it's the way you want it. And then you press OK, and it's going to do its magic. And it says now you can burn the vignette on your photo by painting it around the edges with a lower opacity, 30% or so soft black brush, or brighten the eye skin with a low opacity, soft white brush, flatten your air layers when finished. Now... The great thing about this um, action is when I open up the layers, it has all these options right here. If I move my layers over here so I can see my entire thing, it has a sharpen layer already on that, so it's already sharpened your image. And then you have all these that you can turn on and off with your eyeballs. So if you start on the bottom and work your way up because they're going to layer on top of each other, and then you don't have to turn them off. That's what your bright looks like. This is what urban looks like. Urban's always my favorite. This is what vivid looks like. And this is what soft looks like. Now when you figure out which one you like the best, you turn all the others off. Now I actually really like soft for this, so I'm going to turn the other ones off. And then I can lighten and darken. If I click on this, uh, layer it's gray what the gray is going to do is it's going to allow you to uh, it's going to allow you to brush in areas so if I uh, pick B 
now I have a brush. I'm going to lower my opacity down quite a bit. Then I can darken areas by having black on top um, or lighten areas by having white on top. So you can see here, I can go over that and kind of darken those areas. See where it's, you can tell it's darkening up here. This is kind of burnt out, so I can kind of darken that if I wanted to. Or you could lighten areas as well. So that's what that does. So what I really wanted to show you was the levels and then the different um, things that you can apply. Now, if you don't like any of these, soft, vivid, urban, or bright, you don't have to. It does run a quite a nice action on it. So if I go back to my history, um, it does make a copy for you. So once you cropped it, it um, actually just makes a copy. So this is a completely different image. So I could go back to the beginning. So this is the beginning photo, and this is the end photo. It's, it does punch it up quite a bit. And then I can just flatten this and save it as a JPEG. Now if I open up this one and crop this one down, I'm going to show you what I mean by the mountains in the levels. If I go to coffee shop, vivid again and press play, hit continue. Here's my levels. You see right, whoops, excuse me. You see right here? White doesn't start till right here. I want to pull this slider bar into where the first mountain begins. Now that's a pretty small mountain. I could even pull it into like right here. Then I can adjust. My blacks really don't need to be pulled in. Sometimes your, your blacks do the same thing. And then you can adjust your midtones accordingly. So you go outside, outside, in if you have to adjust both outsides. And then I press OK. And there you go. I can go into my layers now. I can figure out which one I like the best. I like Vivid for this one. And Urban. I really like Urban. So then I would flatten that. And save it as a JPEG as well. So you only have to do one photo, but I wanted to show you both photos. So you can see how the levels really works. There's the original of that, there's the copy of that. So that is how you use the Coffee Shop Vivid uh, action.